Willkommen zu einer neuen Folge Vampyr. Wir sind im Krankenhaus und wir sind auf der Suche nach diesem Fiddick. Ich glaube, das ist der, der da steht. Ne? Kann das sein? Hallo? Okay, ich glaube, der redet da mit dem. Ich glaube, das hier ist dieser Fiddick, den wir suchen. Good evening, Sir. I'm Dr. Reed. May I help you? I don't know if a third opinion is needed. Your colleagues are already arguing about my condition. I see. Would you mind telling me more about your situation? I'm Harvey Fiddick. All I want is to get me bloody arm fixed properly. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Fiddick. I'm just a regular guy waiting to get his arm fixed. So I can return to work. And to my family. I was more curious about what you were doing before being hospitalized. I'm a carpenter. And a good one, too. But that means I need both arms to feed my family, Dr. Reed. Are you satisfied with your treatment here? Well, it's clear that I've chosen a bad time to be injured. Forgive my bluntness, but you seem overwhelmed by cases of the flu. I won't lie to you about it. I'm afraid we are. Are you sure you don't want to operate yourself, Dr. Reed? I have the feeling you're very capable. And your colleagues seem to think so too. In other circumstances, you would be right. But for now, I don't think I can take on the responsibility. My apologies. Tell me about the doctors who are arguing about your case. Strickland and Aykroyd. They both want the best for me, but there's a lot of pride there. Doctors are no different from carpenters, it seems. What do you mean? I often had professional arguments with rivals on a building site. Difference is, I disagreed about wooden nails, not flesh and bones. Ja, wo recht hat, ne? Irgendwie sind die doch alle gleich. Tell me about your injury, Harvey. Why do you feel so guilty about it? My wife died because of me. And now I may lose everything because I've been careless enough to hurt myself. What an arsehole. How could your job be responsible for your wife's death? I was working a double. She went out to bring me a hot meal and got caught in a German bomb raid. Okay, that's not really so dull. You can't hold yourself responsible for your injury, Mr. Fiddick. Unless you tried to hurt yourself. Of course I didn't hurt myself. But I can't work until my arm is fixed. My children need to eat, Doctor. Reden wir mal über den Tod ihrer Frau. Tell me more about the death of your wife, Harvey. 1915. I was in the army. Building workshops for the Royal Flying Corps. Helen was happy I wasn't sent to the front. What happened? The Germans sent Zeppelins to bomb the construction site, but they missed their target. My wife was bringing my dinner when the bombs fell. I'm sorry for your loss. So many died during the bombings. I served in France and witnessed the carnage there. I would like to say that she didn't suffer. Truth is, I have no idea. I just know that I'm all that me kids have. Poor little bleeders. How are your children? After losing their mother. They were smaller then. The only good thing about this is my Ellen didn't bring them with her that night. Okay, now we're fast enough, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. I will not let you down, my boy. Good, then we have with Therma geredet. There is also an unbekannte. Ich denke, dass ihr Blut von Bürgern eine große Menge EP suche, einer Bandstufe oder niedriger und wähle den mit Bedacht aus. Ja, wir haben noch nur... Welche Bandstufe haben wir denn? Oder Mesmerisierungsstufe? Ja, wir haben... Guck mal, wir haben eins. Damit kriegen wir ja nur ihn hier hin.
Okay. Wo ist denn jetzt diese eine hin, die wir noch nicht... Guck mal, mit ihm haben wir noch gar nicht geredet. Good evening, Mr. Ich bin ein schlechter Arzt. How do you feel? Dr. Reed, is it? Oh, Sora, I must apologize for my behavior. What do you mean? I was not myself in the factory. Fear and exhaustion made me say awful things to you, I'm afraid. You remained perfectly nice and polite. A little delirious, perhaps. But who wouldn't be after enduring an abduction? Thank you, Doctor. That's a relief. Now all I need to do is rest and return to my flock. Have you made friends since you arrived? Not really. But I recognize Miss Harriet Jones. I knew her when she lived by the docks. That poor woman had such a miserable life. You never came to see her here at Pembroke. Receiving visits when sick can be an important part of the healing process, you know. We're not just bodies. You're preaching to the converted now, Doctor. To be truly honest, I thought she was dead. She left the docks many months ago. How do you feel, Mr. Hampton? Medically speaking, I mean. I feel exhausted. Beyond exhaustion, actually. William drank so much of my blood in his madness. I feel... empty. You're in good hands here. Dr. Swansea is well versed in blood transfusion, and I'm sure he'll take the best care of you. Thank you, sir. I believe all I need is rest. And then I can go back to the people who need me. What do you do for a living, Mr. Hampton? I can't help but notice the cross around your neck. I manage a night asylum for the poor and homeless of the docks. And I try to guide the lost and hesitant on the right path to our Lord. Why didn't you use your cross against William Bishop? To repel him somehow? That's a very strange question, Doctor. A cross is no magical token, if that's what you were trying to say. Not mine, anyway. Are you a priest, Mr. Hampton? A deacon, maybe? Not at all, Doctor. I'm just a man of faith, willing to preach the good word. Also, nur ein einfacher Bürger, der ein bisschen Glück hatte. Do you know Tom Watts, the bartender from the Turtle? I met him before I found you in the canning factory. Tom? Yes, of course. Always the helping hand, good old Tom. Without men like him, corruption and despair would have wiped out the East End long ago. Who should I avoid in this part of town, then? Any particularly evil figures? Not really. Most men and women are just doing their best. And it's not my habit to speak ill of people I know, Doctor. People are still in despair. How could it be otherwise? The authorities have left us all to rot in this contagious nightmare. No drugs, no advice. Nothing. It's a damn shame. How did you end up in William Bishop's den? I had received alarming news about his recent behavior. I went to his place and he refused to let me go. Why did he abduct you? William was an alcoholic. His addiction suddenly changed to blood. I don't know why. Just like a patient I met here. This Miss Hawcroft. You dared to end okay, this awful place. Place. You're a hero, Mr. Hampton. Or a fool. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. I'm just a man trying to help his friends, Dr. Reed. William Bishop was a conflicted soul, searching for light. Okay, then. What about that? This is the general situation in the East End docks. The situation has always been tough, with a lot of tensions between the gangs and the Dockers Trade Union. The wet boot boys are very nervous since they lost their leader. Who leads the gang now? Since Clay Cox went missing, it's his wife Edwina who runs the show, with the assistance of her minion, Booth Digby. Den Clay Cox kennen wir doch. Has the gang been threatening you? Ah, no. I have had this nickname for so long, you know, the sad saint of the East End. No one dares to bug a saint, not even criminals. Goodbye, Mr. Hampton. We'll talk again later. Können wir nicht gucken, ob wir den auch irgendwie... Oh, 
waren das? Hier war das, ne? Ach, er ist gesund, okay. Hier sind ja noch sehr viele Personen hier aus den Docks, die wir noch nicht kennen. Okay, der erholt sich. Der braucht auch irgendwas gegen Erschöpfung. Die, die kennen wir noch nicht. Reden wir mit der. Good evening, Miss. I'm Dr. Reed, the new surgeon at the Pembroke Hospital. And who are you? Your name has no meaning to me, mortal. You're nothing but dust blown by the winds of eternity. I beg your pardon? What are you begging for, mortal? My clemency? Well, tonight maybe I'm inclined to mercy. You'll never forget the night you met Thelma Howcroft. You keep calling me mortal. Why is that? And if I'm mortal, what are you? Well, Dr. Reed, if you must know, I'm a vampire. Ja, oder nur schlecht geschminkt, Mädchen. Fragen wir mal was persönlich. Ja doch. Who are you really, Miss Howcroft? I mean, apart from being a vampire. Is that not enough for you, puny mortal? What do you require? Hm? Proof of my powers? I'm curious to know who you were before becoming a vampire. That was such a long time ago, I don't remember. Centuries of unholy life can have strange effects on one's minds, you see? Ja, genau, sie sind eine Vampir. Why do you believe you're a vampire? I don't need to believe anything. It is what I am. It is what I feel within this hollow shell of flesh. Please describe to me how you feel. What is it like to be a vampire? I can hear my body crumble from the inside as my flesh cracks and fades. I sense the last pulse of postulant blood within my drying veins. I need new blood. I see. Have you ever heard of Cotard syndrome, Miss Howcroft? Never. It's a mental illness discovered by a French neurologist named Jules Cotard. The affected patients are delusional. They believe that they are putrefying, that they are dead, a, a ghost or a ghoul, or in your case, a vampire. Delusional, you say? Oh, sad and petty mortal. You can't even begin to understand the concept of immortality. And you think it is I who am delusional. I'm assuming you must be a patient here. Am I right, Miss Howcroft? It's only a cover to hide from my enemies. I can leave whenever I want. As a woman, a, a spirit, fog, or bat. Who are these enemies you mentioned? Can you describe them? I cannot say for sure. But I sense their eyes on me from nearby. I, I, I feel them watching me every time I visit the garden near the mook. Okay, he's so gesund. Hm. The staff here are not your enemy. They're here to help you, to care for you. I'm not speaking of the doctors in white. I'm speaking of the men and women who hunt me. For I am a vampire. I see. Don't worry. These people will not find you here. I'll personally make sure they leave you alone. Thank you, mortal. But do not interfere with them, for you are no match for those that hunt me. Do you require my services, Miss Howcroft? I have no need for your medicine, Dr. Reed. Blood is the only drug I need. Okay, da brauchen wir noch zwei Hinweise und... Ja. I'll leave you, Mistress of the Dark, to your nocturnal activities. Gut, dann haben wir ja eigentlich mit jedem hier schon gesprochen, ne? Dann würde ich mal gucken, ob wir vielleicht noch irgendwo... einen Raum übersehen haben, den wir noch nicht nachgeguckt haben. Eigentlich nur den hier, ne? Und das ist das Büro von ja, Swansea. Please, Jonathan, come in. Fass 
fascinating, is it not? In the last decade, so many mysteries have been brought to light with our microscopes. The human body, biology's penultimate frontier. The more we explore its boundaries, the less we're able to trace a clear line between life and death. <laughs> you, my friend, have a foot in both countries. The view must be vertiginous. It's at least as vertiginous as chatting about vampires with you, I would say. This must be all so new to you. This area of town, the hospital, a brand new life. How stimulating it must be. I wish I could share your enthusiasm, Dr. Swansea, but my condition defies scientific categorization. Undead, unalive, immortality defies logic. I cannot express my thrill at this serendipitous turn of events. The world's most eminent specialist in blood transfusions, a vampire. One might say a gift from heaven. There is an absurd poetry to my situation. Physician, heal thyself. Forgive me. I've been an admirer of your work for a long time, and now you are so much more than a brilliant physician. And please, call me Edgar. There is no need to apologize, Edgar. You offered me sanctuary when I had none. Very well. I have a task for you, Jonathan. Something that will require all your newfound skills. Please, go on. The Pembroke only survives through the generosity of our benefactors. Unfortunately, our main donor has found herself in a bit of a bind. Now, if you could help her out... A spokesman or politician is what you need. That's not my calling. And until I come to understand what has happened to me, I require discretion. Discretion is in order, Jonathan. Lady Ashbury has recently received rather indelicate correspondence that, if revealed, would jeopardize her position. And you would like me to eradicate this threat? By the stole, of course not. I would just like you to pay her a visit. Her ladyship is certainly near the tents outside, tending the sick. You can't miss her. Look for someone impossibly delicate. Accepted. I'll see what kind of trouble Lady Ashbury is in. Okay, Lady Ashbury, aber wir sollten glaube ich doch nochmal vorher mit ein paar Leuten hier reden. Was haben wir hier? Okay, das könnt ihr wieder in Ruhe durchlesen, wenn ihr dieses Video anhaltet. Wir überspringen das mal eben schnell. Was haben wir hier überhaupt eigentlich für Schlüssel? Schlüssel zur Notunterkunft. Gleichenhalle. Keller, okay. Können wir noch irgendwas Interessantes hier aufnehmen? Einen warnenden Brief. Wir reden mal mit ihm. Do you need something, Jonathan? I have just a few questions. Then ask away. I'm at your service, Doctor. Since you seem quite the expert on vampires, what could you tell me about my condition and how it came about? As men of science, our first step is always to start with what we know. Forget the myths, the hackneyed scrawlings, and the penny dreadfuls. They do not scratch the surface of the truth you now find yourself in. Must I take a life to live? You are a vampire. You feed. And blood is the sole sustenance that can sustain your immortal frame. And only a living creature contains the nourishment you require. The sun. The morning following my transformation. Its rays burned me. There was pain, smoke, and my skin blackened. 
You will find there is very little that can kill a vampire, my friend. You have been offered relative immortality. The sun will most certainly hurt you, leaving you weakened and damaged. But it will not destroy you. Interessant, das widerspricht ja auch ganz stark sehr vielen ja, Theorien über Vampire. The man we pursued and slew in the canning factory, William Bishop, I believe, was he a vampire? He was a skull, technically speaking. The debate rages as to their classification. Some think them a subspecies of vampire, others something else. Where do... how do skulls come into existence? The name means slave. The etymology may indicate that they are a lesser species of vampire. From what I know, vampires tend to despise them. Just for clarity, what differences are there between myself and a... a skull? A skull is easier to eliminate, Jonathan. Even if they remain formidable foes for the unprepared. <laughs> Vampires. Now, vampires exist beyond the mortal realm. Okay, da haben wir ja schon wieder die Hälfte abgefragt. Since I'm the one working for you, what should I know about Pembroke Hospital? Well, for many years we have been the only medical facility in this part of town that people can rely on. We support the community here, as well as provide health care. We'll see each other again ich glaube, wir haben ihn jetzt noch ein bisschen genug gefragt. Ich glaube, wir sollten mal nochmal oben. Ne, nee, gar nicht. Wir sind ja schon auf der Ebene. Nochmal kurz einmal uns zur Ruhe legen. Ein bisschen aufleveln. Und dann machen wir auch einen kleinen... Die Tür ist weg. Können wir jetzt die Pflanze rausschieben? It needs water. Na okay. Gut, wir legen uns jetzt erstmal schlafen. Und wenn es euch bisher gefallen hat, lasst einen Daumen hoch da oder ein Abo. Oder beides, wenn ihr es noch nicht getan habt. Und dann sehen wir uns in der nächsten Folge wieder. Bis dann.